Hey, what's up, gentlemen? Chris here with Elite Level Leader. In this episode of Business and Barbells, we're gonna begin right here in the boardroom with a business building and growth strategy. Then we'll head over to the battleground where I will demonstrate a fitness training tip and provide you with a daily workout. So let's get started right now. Hey there, Chris McCarthy here with Brand Identified and Elite Level Leader. In this training session, you will learn how to avoid business failure point number nine, which is you don't know the difference between branding and marketing. Branding and marketing are two separate but closely related concepts. Branding refers to the overall strategy and identity of a business, including its values, purpose, and messaging. Marketing, on the other hand, is the specific tactics and channels used to promote products and services to the customers. Failing to understand the difference between branding and marketing can result in misaligned messaging, ineffective marketing campaigns, and a failure to create cohesive and consistent brand image. A lack of understanding of branding can also lead to a failure to differentiate a brand from competitors and build customer loyalty. To avoid this failure point, businesses need to understand the differences between branding and marketing and the role that each plays in the overall success of the organization. Branding is about creating a long-term emotional connection with customers, while marketing is about promoting products or services to drive short-term sales. Here are some steps to help you get started. Number one, training. Invest in training and resources to ensure that you and your team have a clear understanding of the distinctions between branding and marketing. Number two, brand definition. Clearly define your brand by identifying its core values, purpose, personality, and target audience. This forms the foundation of your branding efforts. Number three, marketing definition. Define marketing as the tactical activities aimed at promoting products and services. These activities include advertising, public relations, content marketing, SEO, PPC, and social media marketing. Number four, team responsibilities. Clarify the responsibilities of your branding and marketing teams. Ensure that each team understands its role and how they collaborate to support the overall business goals. Number five, align messaging. Ensure that your branding and marketing messaging are consistent and complement each other. Your marketing efforts should amplify your brand's core values and messages. Number six, brand building. Understand that branding is a long-term strategy aimed at creating a strong and enduring emotional connection with your audience. Number seven, marketing objectives. Recognize that marketing focuses on achieving short-term goals such as increased sales, driving uh, website traffic, and generating leads. Number eight, develop brand guidelines. Create comprehensive brand guidelines that provide clear instructions on how your brand should be portrayed across all marketing channels and consumer touch points. Number nine, know your audience. Understand your target audience's needs, preferences, and pain points. Tailor both your branding and marketing strategies to address these aspects effectively. Number 10, consistent branding. Maintain consistency in all your branding elements, including logos, colors, typography, and messaging to ensure that your brand remains recognizable and trustworthy. Number 11, performance metrics. Establish key performance indicators for both branding and marketing efforts. Regularly track and measure the impact of each strategy and refine your approach. Number 12, seek expertise. If you're uncertain about the distinctions between branding and marketing, consider consulting with branding and marketing professionals who can provide guidance tailored to your business's specific needs. Number 13, continuous learning. Encourage a culture of continuous learning and adaptation within your organization. Stay updated on industry trends and best practices in both branding and marketing. By fostering a clear understanding of the differences between branding and marketing and their complementary roles, businesses can create a cohesive strategy that builds a strong brand identity while effectively promoting products or services. This alignment enhances brand recognition, fosters customer loyalty, and contributes to sustainable business growth. 
That is all for now. I'll see you back here in the boardroom for your next business tr strategy session. And to continue your training, be sure to visit brandidentified.com or elitelevelleader.com to learn more about our services and complete training programs. Hey, what's up gentlemen? Chris here with Elite Level Leader and welcome to the battleground. In today's workout, I've got a five minute AMRAP for you and AMRAP is as many rounds or as many reps as possible within that five minutes. So basically how this is going to work is you're gonna go ahead and set a clock for five minutes. Now within that five minutes, we're gonna repeat a sequence of movements for that five minutes. Once that five minutes is up, you're gonna go ahead and rest for one minute. Then after the rest of well, one minute rest is up, we're gonna go ahead and repeat that same sequence of, of movements for another five minutes, rest for one more minute, and then do a third and final round of that five minute AMRAP. And then once you've completed that, the workout is complete. So basically with the rest in there, it makes up for a 17 minute workout. But like I said, this is an AMRAP. It starts with five minutes, so set that clock. And it starts off today with nine pull-ups. So you might have have a pull-up bar like I have mounted to the wall here. You might have a pull-up bar that's mounted in your doorway. I also have a couple options for those of you who are unable to do uh, an unassisted pull-up, but I'll get to those. First off, we'll talk about the standard pull-up position here. So palms are gonna be facing forward here, a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. You're gonna go ahead and jump up on that bar, pull your chest over the top, or your chin up over the top, all the way down, all the way up, and you do nine of these pull-ups. Now, as I mentioned, if you are unable to do unassisted assisted pull-ups, you have a couple options. The first is to go ahead and put a box or a bench down in front of the bar that you have there. From there, you can place one foot on there. And then as you're pulling up, you're using that leg to press through that box or that bench to give you that assistance to get your chin up over the top. Also, if you do have a bar or even just the top of a doorway, something you can wrap a band around a hinge, you get a set of these bands that actually have handles on them. And what we can do is we can actually mimic that pull up uh, motion. So all you have to do is then go ahead and throw this band up over the top of your bar. Now, depending on the height of your bar, you might need to get down into a kneeling position or in my case, a seated position, but it's the same thing we were doing before. So palms are facing forward here, a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. You're gonna go ahead and pull those bands down to your palms, your hands go down below chin level, all the way up and then all the way down. Now you can go ahead and if you are doing those standard push up or pull ups on the bar, you're gonna go ahead and, and do nine. But with this band, these are significantly easier. So I recommend doubling or tripling the amount of reps that you're gonna typically do. So if you're doing the bands on there, now depending on the strength of that band, either do 18 or maybe even 27 of those, uh, just to double, triple that up so you make sure you're getting the most effective workout possible by using those bands. Now, after you've completed your nine pull ups, now what we're gonna do is move on to 12 dumbbell thrusters. So we've done thrusters here before in the past. I'm gonna go ahead and grab two dumbbells here. First off, I'm gonna go over the movement standards by setting these dumbbells down here on the ground. Now the dumbbell thruster, um, we've gone over this before, it's a very fluid motion. So basically you're gonna have two dumbbells in a front rack position. From this front rack position, you're gonna go into a full squat, you're gonna come out of that squat, press the dumbbells all the way up overhead, all the way down, all the way up. But you'll see it's a fluid motion. I'm not bringing the dumbbells down, pausing at my shoulders and then going into the squat. I'm also not standing up, pausing and pressing them up overhead. You wanna use the power and the strength of your lower body to generate that moment as you're coming up over the squat to start to press those dumbbells all the way up overhead. So I have these two dumbbells. They're gonna be in this front rack position. Palms are facing each other. I'm in a nice squat stance. Feet are a little bit wider than hip width apart. Chest up, shoulders back. I'm gonna go down into the squat position. Press all the way up, then all the way down. All the way up, all the way down. All the way up, all the way down. So those are the dumbbell thrusters and you're gonna end up doing 12 of those. Now we're gonna go into, after you've completed 12 of those, you're gonna go into 18 sit-ups. Now, if you have an ab mat, I highly recommend one of these. Basically, this gives you a little bit of support on your lower back. If you don't have an ab mat, you can get a towel, roll that up, place it in the lower part of your back, gives you a little bit of support. So I'm gonna place this down on the ground here against my lower back. Feet are together, knees are together, legs are about a 90 degree angle or a little bit more than that. You're gonna come all the way back, touch your hands on the ground behind your ears, and then come all the way up, touch your hands next to your heels. All the way back, 
all the way up. Now you notice I'm not placing my hands old school behind my neck. That puts a lot of strain in the neck and your head and neck should be in neutral spine the entire time. Chest comes all the way up till it touches your knees. 18 of those sit-ups, really working the core, really working the abs there. After you complete 18 of those sit-ups, now we're just gonna go into 24 old school jumping jacks. So the jumping jack, feet are together, hands are by your sides, feet are gonna come apart, hands touch the top. 24 of these jumping jacks, hands touch the top, or you can go behind your back and touch your hands behind your back. Just bringing up that cardio, bringing up that conditioning for the fat loss component in here. So 24 of those jumping jacks. Then you're gonna keep on repeating that same sequence of movements, like I said, for a total of five minutes. After the five minutes is up, you're gonna go ahead and rest for one minute. Then you're gonna repeat that same sequence of movements, the pull-ups, the dumbbell thrusters, the sit-ups, and the jumping jacks for another five minutes. Rest for one more minute, and then a third and final round of that five minute AMRAP. Once that is complete, then this workout is complete. All right, guys, that is the workout of the day. I'll see you right back here in the battleground for your next workout. And as always, make sure you check out EliteLevelLeader.com for more training programs and to enlist today.